Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today I'm super excited because I'm going to be showing you how to use the Fetch API in JavaScript if you were like me a few years ago and you were scared of using Fetch because of the promises and then catch things like that, you were just comfortable using Ajax. So if that's you right now, trust me, Fetch changed my life so hopefully today's video is going to be beneficial to you. So, I'm going to be showing you the exact same example of retrieving a simple JSON file using vanilla JavaScript Ajax, then jQuery Ajax, then lastly the Fetch API, we're going to be writing it from scratch. So, I'm going to be showing you the two Ajax examples quite quickly before moving on to the Fetch example. Okay, so, a quick heads up, a sync awaits you know, used with Fetch is a game changer. So I've got a whole video dedicated to that. If you want to watch that one after this one, I'll leave it up to you. But look, that is an absolute game changer. But anyway, let's go inside the text editor right here. We can see I've got this index HTML file. So we're going to be retrieving a simple JSON file, like I mentioned. And of course, this file looks like this right here. We've got this user.json containing information about me, decode, I'm online right now, obviously, whatever, it's fine, but anyway, we've got this JSON file. So, let's take a look at a simple Ajax example. Let's go down here and take a look at this code. So, as we can see, we are simply firstly creating our request object, then once the response comes back, we're saying let's grab the response text and convert it from JSON into a JavaScript user object. Then we are simply logging out that user to the console. Down here, we're saying, you know what, let's make this a get request for this URL and let's make it asynchronous. Then of course we are sending off that request. So if I save this, go inside the browser, refresh, we grab the response user right there it's all working perfectly fine so now that is your simple vanilla js ajax example so let's now look at the ajax example sorry the jquery ajax example so let's comment this one in now so using jquery as we can see we've got uh, quite a quite a uh, quite a simplified you know example so first off jquery assumes you're using a get request by default then of course, it's going to the URL of the user.json. Then it's got this success callback function. So what you noticed with the vanilla JS and this jQuery example is that these use callback functions. So basically, got this function right here and it runs whenever the response comes back. So we're going to be seeing how this is uh, different to, uh, you know, uh, fetch very shortly. But now, as we can see, We've got the user inside here. The reason is, is because jQuery sees the server side has told uh, the browser what the, uh, what the content type is. In this case right here, the server is telling jQuery it's a JSON file. So JSON sees this and automatically converts it from JSON into a JavaScript object for us. And that is why we don't see the JSON parse right here. Anyway, we then console log the user. If I save this, go inside the browser, refresh, we can see we've got the, once again, the user right inside here, all working perfectly fine. So if I go inside the network tab right inside here, we can see on the actual response here, we have the response header of content type being JSON. And that right there is what JSON, sorry, that's what jQuery sees in order to automatically convert our data from JSON into a JavaScript object. But anyway, let's move on to our fetch example right now. So back inside here, let's comment this out and bring in our fetch file. So for this one, we're going to be writing it from scratch. So we're going to say fetch right here. We're going to call the fetch function. So now we're going to pass through the URL. We're going to say data forward slash user dot JSON. Then we're going to say dot then so this first line right here it's simply saying let's make a request to that json file then we're going to run this function inside these parentheses this function is going to give us the response object right there so basically this response object contains information about of course the response so if i console.log the response object right here 
I save this, go back inside the browser, we can see, refresh, we grab the whole response object right here and basically this contains similar information to the network tab inside the response section right down here. So of course you can say response.headers.get, you know, content type, whatever it might be. You can of course check the OK status, redirected status, etc. So you can do all of these things before moving on. Okay, so that is your that is your response object. Now, back inside here, we can see how the promises are working. We're saying do this, right? Then do this. It's actually that straightforward. Do this, then do this. Okay. Now, if we return from this function right here. Whatever the return is from this function, that is what the next then is going to grab onto. For example, response.json. Let's take the response text and convert it into a JavaScript object by parsing it as being JSON. Return response JSON. Then we're going to say dot then once again. Now we've got the user, like I mentioned, right? Like I mentioned. The return result from this one is going to be put into this this uh, this parameter right inside here. So now, if I console.log the user and I save this, go back inside the browser, we have the exact same result, the user object right here. So that is why fetch is probably going to be a lot easier to read because the code is quite straightforward. Do this, then do this, then do this, etc. Now, of course. This right here, this function, can be simplified to simply just being response, then using an arrow function right here, and it does the exact same thing. So, why is this even more useful? Well, if I return from this function, I can say return user.displayName dot to uppercase. Okay, then I can say dot then once again, right? And I can grab the display name right here. I can just call this display name um, as uppercase, for example, right? Just like this. Then I can say console.log display name as uppercase. So we can see here, if I save this, go back inside the browser, refresh, we grab the display name right there as uppercase. So, of course, it's actually, it's quite a simple example, not too much going on, quite useless, but we can see how you can use it to, of course, chain on your things to do. Do this, then do this, then do this, etc. It's easier to read compared to constantly calling callback functions in your Ajax uh, examples. Okay. Also, if I say dot catch right here, we can grab onto an error if it was to occur. So I can say right here handle my error. So for example, if the JSON up here, you know, failed to parse, okay, or maybe the file, uh, maybe the server returned a 500 response code, you know, something has gone wrong, whatever it might be, right, inside here you can grab the error and of course handle it. So fetch is obviously a lot simpler to read from up to down, do this, do this, do this, etc. Now, where it becomes interesting and definitely a lot more a lot more impressive is when you combine it with a sync await so let's convert this example right here into a sync await so let's go up here we're going to be defining a new asynchronous function right up here called uh, show user in console okay now the async uh, you know function right here just means that we're able to use await. So basically, because as we know, uh, the fetch API is going to be doing things asynchronously, just like Ajax. So basically, we're just saying we're going to be able to wait for the response to come back before we continue with the code. So we're going to see it right now quite, quite simply. So we're going to say const response is equal to, then we're going to say await. Okay, we're going to say fetch. Then once again to data slash user dot json so this right here might look a little bit scary if you're not used to it but trust me it's not that uh it's not that complex okay so see here all we're saying is let's let's wait so we're saying here let's wait for the response to come back before running the code down here basically 
we're gonna fetch, we're gonna get the re get the request, get the data back, right? Get the get the response back. We're gonna wait for it to happen. Then we can run the code down here. Okay. Then we're gonna say const user equal to await response dot json. Just like before, right? With the dot then, whenever you use dot then from before, it's basically the same thing as just saying await in this example right here. So dot then, await, similar sort of thing, right? So now we're saying await, convert it into JSON. Once that's done, we can now console.log the user. Now, I've got a whole video dedicated to this right here. It goes in more detail. So if you want to see that, I'll leave it linked below and in the top right of this video, okay? So now, if I call this show user in console, just like this, save this, go inside the browser, refresh, we can see we have right here the object. So this example right here is a lot simpler compared to our Ajax, a lot cleaner, easier to work with, and there you go. So that is the fetch API for people like me who are used to using Ajax. Uh, thanks for watching today's video, guys. Subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.